I feel honored and privileged to be able to address this esteemed committee and in an effort to reveal truth and justice for not just myself, but for all. In early May of 2019, the FBI launched a full investigation on me. At our trials, rigged so that we could not reveal the criminality of the FBI's actions in our case, they cited three reasons for the investigation. First, anonymous reporting of me illegally possessing firearms. They knew that anonymous reportings are difficult to validate, and as the highest law enforcement of the land, they should have been aware of the governor's pardon that I had received in April of 2019, rendering that claim to be bogus. Secondly, they cited my exercise of First Amendment free speech on social media, which may have been distasteful, but didn't reach the threshold of criminal. And third and most important was information they received from the Dallas field office. I hadn't been in or near Texas in 2019. This was merely retaliatory for my association with Kevin Lindell Massey, a 2014 border defender from Texas who was discovered by federal law enforcement on December 23rd, 2019 with a gunshot wound to the neck, which they ruled a suicide. They monitored my every move for eight months and I hadn't committed any crime. This included warrants for every form of communication I took part in, use of 24 hour physical surveillance teams and social media informants who had never met me. All to no avail, I hadn't committed any crime. But the FBI was determined to obtain a prosecution against me. Their answer was to send CHSs or confidential human sources at me in January of 2020. The term CHS is very misleading. It implies that they are using informants. In Black's Law Dictionary, informant is defined as one who confidentially supplies information to the police about a crime. But what happens when law enforcement knows that there is no crime? The CHS is paid and used as an agent provocateur. The definition of agent provocateur in Merriam-Webster's dictionary is a person hired to infiltrate a group and incite its members to illegal action. The court sealed the discovery information in our case in order to cover up for the FBI. If you investigate this case, I swear before the almighty God, you'll find these words to be true. I apologize and have paid for my intoxicated ramblings that were recorded, but I did not conspire to commit any crime. In 1932, Supreme Court Justice Roberts stated in his opinion, Courts must be closed to the trial of a crime instigated by the government's own agents. He also stated that preservation of the purity of its own temple belongs only to the court. But what happens when the court shields its eyes from the truth and through its rulings obscures the facts? I want to offer my sincerest gratitude for your obvious pursuit of the righteous truth. If we cannot rely on the judicial and executive branches to serve and protect justice, that awesome responsibility falls on the legislative branch. And all Americans should be encouraged by your efforts to do that. As for myself, and judging by my experience in this case, I feel that you are my only hope for the legitimate finding of fact in this matter. Thank you for hearing from me. God bless and protect the United States of America.